Hi, I'm back. My husband just came in. I wanted to, you know, see if he wanted water or whatever. For me, what I believe is when my husband come home, what am I, whatever I'm doing, I stop that, you know, to see how he's feeling. Does he want any water? Help him off with his cold, you know, whatever, you know, to, just to make sure that my attention is towards him. Why you do that? Why? Because you never know how it makes your other half feel that when they come in, that they're received with inviting of love, of how you doing, you okay? You know, if he's coming in from work, how was your day? Would you like some water? Would you like some juice? Help him off with his coat. Now that there's pandemic, <laughs> make sure you sanitize your hands and spray down everything, you know, that he has on from outside. So also I know, believe if I'm on the phone and he comes in, whoever I'm talking to, okay, let me get back to you or um, I'll talk to you later to give him that undivided attention. And um, it's made these almost 20 years really good. Ain't gonna tell you it's cool in the gang always, but if you can find ways to put into your marriage, because marriage is a ministry, I'm still doing golden nuggets, and today's topic is preparation. Prepare your marriage so that up the road you have put down some good foundation. When I say marriage is a ministry, trust me, if you think that you're going to dun, 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 walk down that aisle and you do all your vows and you, oh, I love you. Mm -hmm. And you think it's all, ooh, yeah. Because <laughs> our lives are not our own. Your marriage is not your own. When I mean your marriage is not your own, there are so many people that are looking at you and they, are, they can read up on what marriage is and go to counseling. But the proof of the pudding is something that they're seeing straight up here. Not fake, because there are a lot of marriage. The people come outside, they all dressed up from head to toe. They look all good. And yes, and my husband and my wife, man, as soon as y'all get behind that door, close it, boom, bang. It's hell up in there. Mm -mm, no. But I will tell you, if you have a little tip with your husband or with your wife, you leave the house. Women don't do this. Men don't do this. She get on my nerve. I hate the day I married her. Huh. Hmm. He get on my nerve. He don't know. And next month, I'm out. Don't do that. Keep all that in your house. Get all of that straightened out in your house. And when you leave your house, don't leave your house like this. The man all walking all the way up ahead of the woman. And the woman, she dragging her feet. Then y'all get in the car. And wherever y'all going, when you get there, people be looking at you. Why they look at you? Like that. Is something wrong? What? What's going on? Don't do that. Get that straight now in your house. Preparation. Preparation. How you build your foundation. I'm telling you. Make sure the foundation is poured with cement. Not sand. Not dirt. Not any other element cement 
the foundation of the house. How are we going to build a home, build our family? So preparation in that area also. I had touched briefly on the financial part of it. When we got married, I didn't have a clue. I was used to living paycheck to paycheck. It was just me for a long time. Remember, I got married when I was 46 and everything worked for me. But then, when I got married, it was no longer uno, it was dos. And uno didn't have a clue on, first of all, how to be a wife. Second of all, of just the whole, I have a husband and my husband is the head. I knew it. Oh, I could verbally say it. God is the head of the family, and then it is the man, and then the woman. But you got to learn to live that thing. And it took me a long time to learn how to live that, that my husband is the head, and my husband has a plan. He don't have to tell me the plan, and that was my problem. I would be one of what we going, what we going to do, how we going to do this. I did the who, what, when, why, how. The whole gamut. And this man already knew what he wanted for our family. I, I didn't get the memo for a long time. And um, I messed up a lot of money. And I lost the trust of my husband when it came to money and it took years for that trust to come back into the marriage and I thank God that the trust is there now that he's able to trust me to take care of the bills and not dibble in it not dabble in it but to pay the bills whatever he says for me to pay you pay that you don't know, be siphoned take out a little bit, you know, and I need to pay my bill. Yeah, I did it. I did it. I don't say that in a way of saying, hmm, yeah, I did it. I did it because I needed to do it, but I should have discussed it with my husband first. And what I found out in our marriage is that if I discuss something with him and I ask him what he says, it's best for me to do it. Because when I don't do it, I mess up big time. Ooh, child, Lord have mercy. I have messed up big time. So I thank God for him. And I thank God that I didn't do the preparation because I didn't know what the preparation was. When I got married and I was off on vacation during that time, and I told my husband, when it was time for me to go back. I said, can I stay home? He said, yeah, you can stay home. I was like, okay. But staying home taught me how to be a wife. It took me a long time when we would go out and we were, you know, of course, we're in church, all of those of you that know me. And if you don't know me, we go to church and they would have, you know, we'd have buffet style food and stuff. And I would go and fix my plate. And someone, one of the sisters would always say, Jackie, you didn't fix brother Rob's plate? I'm like, huh? He didn't fix his own food. He didn't know what he want. No, Jackie, that's not what you do. You go and you fix Rob's plate. I said, okay. It took me a long time to get there. Selfish? I'm an only child, and I had to learn that I had selfish ways because I was used to doing things my way, and that was it. If you wanted to come on board while it was my way, come on in. But I had to learn that 
fix your husband's food. Little things. You all may not agree what I'm saying, but I'm telling you what works for me as an example. And when I said that your life is not your own, we were created to be God's workmanship, to be his mouthpiece, that when people see and look at us, they see Christ. And it's like, wow, I, I, I like that. I, I want that for my life. That's, that's how it should have. That's how you're like, not fake, but being the true you who Christ made you to be. And we were just told recently by a young man, he came and he put our television up on the wall. And he said, you know, because my, I have many names, but one of the names is my little grandson, my sweet baby. I love him so much. That's our oldest grandson, Michael. I named him Cookie after my nickname. He gave me the name when he, I think he was about three, of Booby. So everyone from his side of the family knows me as Booby and Pops. So the young man was putting up the television on the wall and he said, you know, Booby and Pops, I admire y'all's marriage. We were so shocked. We said, for real? He said, yes, and it, it's, you know, I want my marriage to be how yours marriage, uh, you know, when, when we, my, me and my wife, we get older, I want us to be like you, because we had did something in the house, and uh, we, Rob and I were talking, he looked at us, and he said, that's how I want my marriage to be, that's how I want my wife to talk to me, and we were really surprised, but it just made us feel good and first of all foremost we gave praise to God because Rob and I came from different settings I'm a project girl he was raised in a house with a mother and father and they were middle class I was poor and didn't know it <laughs> my father died when I was four and it was just my mother and I, so I do not know the, how it was being in the family with a mother and a father. And the father went out. I didn't know, and didn't, well, I didn't realize that. That was my husband's mindset of, I would be a homemaker. I was like, oh, okay. But God blessed. And here we are in 2021. My husband is going to be 68 and I just turned 66. And I can tell you, out of 100, it's kissing to the perfection of 100 of how our marriage has been. I'm not gonna say you don't have your ups, your downs, and your disagreements yes that's normal but I can say my husband has really been a good husband to me I had to learn to let him and allow him to be a good husband because I was so busy being who I was because remember y'all I got married old I was four years away from 50 so there was a retraining the horse, the mule, whatever animal you want to use. I had to be retrained, deprogrammed of thinking single, me. And it took a while to get itself together, but it finally and eventually did get itself together where I have learned, and I'm still learning. I'm not going to tell you I've got to perfection now. There's still some tweaks. There's always room for perfection. There's always room to tweak and perfect. So this is perfection. This is preparation. I used the wrong word. Preparation for your life. 
take this day, I think today's the 23rd, February 23rd, 2021. Take this day of being a day of preparation and do your list of what you want to do with your life. How are you preparing for your life? Those of you that are watching, you may be in your 20s, your 30s, or your 40s. Have you prepared for your future financially, medically? Do you have life insurance? Whereas as if something happened to you today or tomorrow and you out of here, is your family going to be the ones that take care of your burial? Do you have that type of insurance that it's enough money wherein as you can be buried and there can be finances left for your companion or for your children? Those of you that have children, are you preparing, putting money aside for your children to be able to go to college? Preparation. This really ends the end of this video. And I hope it will be a blessing to you. And I want to thank you all that have come in to watch the video. My name is Jacqueline McQueen. And welcome to Jacqueline's channel. Everyone be blessed.